Fibbertube, it's Paige, and it's March, so I need to do my February wrap-up. I read 10 books in February. I probably would have read more, but sickness got to me and killed several days of reading, <sighs> which sucks. But anyways, so I did get 10 books done, and I I think I'll probably just go in order. I don't know. We'll have to see. So the first book I read was Lust by Karaduki. It's the first book in the Elite Seven series and I really loved it. Uh, it's definitely, it's different than most of Kara's books. Usually her books are really dark and this one really wasn't that dark. I mean it's got a little bit but not a lot. It was more just kind of like, ugh, it got me at the heart at least. It's pretty short you know it's a fast read hey guys so I was going over my February wrap-up video and I realized that I never really even told you guys a main component of less and the elite seven is a secret society and you know it's full of the elite and every four years they pick the best and brightest students in college, male, female, it doesn't matter, and they put them through these series of tests to get into the elite, and each of the candidates, there's, they always pick seven, and they all have, uh, they're all given a sin, one of the seven deadly sins. So there's lust, pride, wrath, envy, greed, gluttony, and sloth. And that's, yeah, that's what it's about. So, and that's the order that the books are going in. I've read lust and pride, and uh, wrath and envy are coming out this month in March. And, yeah, but so I just wanted to give you a little background because I realized I hadn't, and so, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, five stars. And I have read Pride, and I will get to that. But yeah, I'm really excited to read the rest of the series, and I don't know. I don't, Oh, okay. I should probably warn you. Okay, so I feel like I don't, like most reviewers on BookTube are really tough. And I mean, I'm not saying I'm not tough, but... Before, when I first started reading, I had kind of decided that I was never going to rate anything one or two stars because I felt like it was mean. I know it's not mean. I don't know. I know it's not mean. I know it's very valid. Some books really deserve one or two stars. I know it's not mean. And honestly, I think I felt, if I felt a book called for it, I would, but I don't know. I haven't really come across that yet. So, so... Uh, and I don't know. It's not really that hard to get a five-star rating from me, but I don't know. I just feel like if I really loved the book and there was nothing wrong for it with me and my reading experience, then I don't understand why I should give it like a four stars when my reading experience was like a five star. And so, yeah, so that's how I do. But so it's not a hard to get like a five star rating for me but like it's super hard to get a six star rating for me like those books are gonna be like definitely my top reads at the end of the year and just I don't give out six stars willy-nilly I don't I rarely give them out so yeah I mean they're not like a, a 10 star book I've never given a 10 star book of review 10 stars honestly I feel like those are unicorns like they are out there but I will probably never find one so that's just me optimistic pessimistic personality me anyways so yeah so just be warned that's how it goes all right the next book I read was branded by Clarissa Wilde it's the fourth book in her Savage Men series and the hero, he is, well, yeah, he's Native American. I know the guy doesn't really look Native American, but he is. Anyways, him and the heroine, they, I feel like it's kind of like almost a Romeo and Juliet type thing. You know, their families, like, hate each other, and they loved each other, and then stuff happened, and they kind of hate each other now. And, yeah, so, it's kind of, it's like, <laughs> uh... 
It was like a friends to lovers to enemies to lovers a type deal. And I don't know. I, I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. It's probably my favorite in the Savage Men series. It is dark, so I don't know if everybody can read it. I'm not sure. I don't know. Give it a try, maybe. Uh, you, you, and you can read it by itself. It is a standalone. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I don't know if you would like it if you don't like dark books. I don't know. It's not super, super dark. Gosh, it's so hard. So hard. All right. The next book I read was Kill Switch by Penelope Douglas. Gosh, it feels like I read these like forever ago. I feel like February lasted forever. Anyways, uh, I gave this six stars. It was amazeballs. It was fantastic. It was, like, outstanding. I loved it. It was, I, I don't want to go into it. This is Damon's story. He's my favorite of the Devil's Knights heroes. He's actually probably my second favorite Penelope Douglas hero. It's just, if you've read the Devil's Knights series and you're worried about Damon, give him a chance. He totally deserves it. I absolutely love him. I mean, there's questionable stuff that happens. I mean, it's Damon. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, not like a super, super horrible, but I just mean, he's not the nicest guy in the world all the time. So, I mean, I'm not saying make excuses for him. I'm just saying, <sighs> just give him a chance. Okay, it's a great book. Read them in order, but if you must, just at least read Corrupt first. I would recommend order, but, you know, I understand if you don't. So, this was outstanding. Loved it so hard. So hard. Alright, the next book I read was Mimi Jean Pantheloff's Battle of the Bulge. It's the fourth book in her Oh Hell No series. Had to do it. Okay. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It's just, you know, it's a really fast read. It's kind of, uh, well, I don't really want to say Insta Love, but I mean, it's, I don't know if it feels that way. It's just a really short book, or I read it really fast. <coughs> <coughs> And I don't know, it takes place over like a two to three month period. And, you know, it's kind of like uh, enemies to lovers, hate to love type book. And the hero, uh, I can't remember what his name is, but he's an Australian swimmer. And he, well, it's not his fault, but he ends up having to hire a bodyguard. And the heroine is his bodyguard. And he's silly and doesn't believe that she can be a bodyguard. But she proves him wrong. And I don't know. It's just, it's funny and light. And, you know, if you want a quick read that's just, you know, gonna, you're gonna enjoy and laugh. This is definitely a good one. It's... I was going to say something else about it, and I can't remember what I was going to say. It's, uh, it does have its deep moments, just not very deep, but a little deep. I don't know. It was an enjoyable read. I am looking forward to reading the rest of the Own Hell No series. I've read the first one, and I need to read the two and three, and I'm looking forward to the next book. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, the next book I read was the Tubman Command by Elizabeth Cobbs. This is not out yet, but it was my uh, book that I wanted to read for Black History Month, and it's about Harriet Tubman, obviously, and it is historical fiction, so it's not like, it's not like it's non-fiction, uh, but the, it's basically about Harriet Tubman. She's at this place I think in South Carolina and she is trying to get the general to plan uh, an escape for <coughs> for a whole bunch of slaves like a thousand and she so she goes and she finds out all the necessary information to get to the plantation safely and it was really it was a really 
a wonderful book. I loved it. I love Harriet Tubman. She's just somebody who I've always been fascinated with, and I gave it five stars. I don't know if, I don't know, I feel like there were some phrases that I'm not sure if they're actually <laughs> were said, but I really enjoyed it. You know, Elizabeth Cobbs, she made me see, like, a side of Harriet Tubman that I never thought of. You know, I always kind of idolized her, and I feel like this book just kind of, like, humanized her for me. You know, I could see her as a person instead of just, you know, somebody who... I don't know if I want to say pedestal, but just something like that. So I, I really enjoyed it. I really loved it. It was a great book. It's out May 7th, I believe. And it was just, it was a fantastic book. So if you love Harriet Tubman, you should give it a chance. Elizabeth Cobb's writing was uh, really, really good. And just the story was great. And I enjoyed it so much. Okay, the next book that I read was The Forgotten Commander by Kay Webster and Nicole Blanchard. I've been waiting for Kay Webster to write an alien book because I know how much she loves aliens. And she and Nicole worked on this book for like a year and it showed because it completely paid off. The world was so intricate and planned out and, you know, everything. There was nothing I felt like whenever they were uh, explaining something. I just, I didn't feel like there was any holes. You know, everything had a place and it was really great. The, uh, it's called the Lost Planet series and it's, the planet's called like Mortalis and the people, there's only like 10 people. Their planet basically got sick and everybody but like 10 uh, men survived and like even the world is toxic so whenever they go outside they have to have like special gear and they got the heroin because they can go off planet and two of their people did they call them morts I don't know if I said that but they went off they found cryopods or whatever like five cryopods with five women and yeah, they, uh, awakened her, and they are planning on, well, they want to breed with the women, you know, because if they don't, they're gonna die, but I mean, it's not like, there's no, like, no rape or anything like that, and I don't know, it was just, it was a fantastic book, it was so excellent, I really loved it, and I cannot wait for the next book, I think it's called The vanished specialist I believe and I'm so excited for that one all right the next book I read was pride by JD Hollyfield and this is the second book in the elite seven series and oh my gosh you guys intense that is the best word I can describe to, to I can use to describe this book it was so intense like I thought lust ended intensely and then this book just like took that intensity and turned it up and kept it like going the whole way through it was sexy and dark and oh my gosh like it's probably like the darkest J.D. Hollyfield book I've read not that it's like and I mean this is J.D. Hollyfield we're talking about she usually writes rom-coms so when I say dark it's like the darkest book she's ever read it's not horribly, horribly dark, but it's definitely dark for her. It was just, it was so good. So good. I loved this book. I just, I loved it. It was so awesome. Mason is, yeah, just, yeah, it's, it's a great book. You should give this series a chance. I'm like, we got to see more of Sloth's character, and just, I really, I cannot wait until Sloth's book, and of course, it's the last book in the series, ah, okay, so I loved this book, five stars, all right, it was so good, all right, the next book that I read was uh, my Romanceopoly pick, Murder Mill, I thought I was gonna read Her Last Whisper, and I was right, I did read it. And oh my gosh, you guys, I, so I, this book came out in 2014, 
and I really loved the series. I started it in 2012 when it came out, but I, the second book, which is called The Last Kiss Goodbye, it messed me up so bad at the ending. It just killed me. And so I was going to read this when it came out, but I put it off, and then I found out that the, there was going to be a fourth book, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to wait. And, yeah, I waited until just now to read it. But I'm so glad and sad that I did. Because I really love this book. I mean, it was just... Uh, the heroine, her name is Charlotte. She's a psychologist and she sees ghosts. The hero, his name is Michael, and he's a ghost. And now you see my conundrum. Because it's just like, I had no idea how it was going to end. Because, I mean, she's alive and he's dead. How can that work out? I had no idea if it was going to be like a ghost whisper type situation. I didn't know if she was going to have to die. I didn't know how it was going to work out. I just didn't. So, yeah. But this is really, you know, at the back, this says providing both thrills and chills. And, oh my gosh, dude. Thrills and chills. Seriously, this book did give me chills. It was kind of scary. It was exciting. It was never boring. It was a bit scary. It was just, it was everything. I loved it so hard. And the way that it ended... Yeah, I had to read this next. This is the last book. It's the last time I saw her. And I wasn't going to read it, but the way that her last whisper ended, I had to read it. There was, like, no ifs, ands, or buts. There was no choice. I had to read it. And, uh, this book, it was, it was, yeah, that was everything, and then this was everything. Five stars, both of them. I almost, I thought about, I considered giving this six stars, but it wasn't quite a six star. But, honestly, this series, the Charlotte Snow series, it's my favorite series by Kay Webster, or, I mean, Karen Robards, sorry. And, honestly, it's probably just, like, the books overall are probably just my favorite Karen Robards books. It's just, I mean, the series caused me so much anxiety, but I loved it. <laughs> and it ended just perfectly, and I just, I loved this series. <laughs> It caused me a lot of anxiety, but it was worth it. And I'm sad that it's over. I'm definitely going to reread this series. I loved it. And the last book I read, I almost didn't finish it, but I did with like 40 minutes to spare until midnight. Maybe less. And that was The Eighth House by Eris Adderley. And honestly, I feel like probably the Karen Robards books kind of killed or I don't want to say killed my enjoyment of it because I did enjoy it but I sadly I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to it's the eighth house <sighs> Hades and Persephone and I just I don't know I mean I thought this would be a slam dunk because it's Hades and Persephone they're my favorite I love them and I don't know I, I really think Eris she did uh, she her writing was fabulous the world that she created was fabulous just I don't know I don't really know what it is I mean I feel like Hayes and Persephone connected I, don't, I feel like there was probably just maybe too much sex <laughs> or just or too much sex and not enough like uh, emotional substance I don't know I feel like you know they just didn't they spent more time and, I mean, I can understand why they did, because it was kind of like a BDSM sort of relationship, and, you know, those, and it was a lot about trust and surrender and all that stuff, and I don't know, it was, I'm, it probably wouldn't have, it didn't bother me, but I probably wouldn't have, you know, been so, oh, if I hadn't just read the Karen Robard series, which, I mean, you know, Charlotte and Michael, I mean, they can't just have sex whenever they want. I mean, he's dead. They can't touch. And so, you know, that was probably just it. But I did enjoy it. And I will, you know, probably pick her up again. I don't know. I gave it four stars. <sighs> I don't know. It was a good book. But I don't know. It just, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. But, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't say not to give it a chance. If you love Hades and Persephone, I mean, you'll probably enjoy it. I did enjoy it, just not as much as I thought I was going to. So, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's it. Those are my ten books. It was a good month, and I'm excited to read stuff in March. So, goodbye.